Welcome to Table Tennis Philosophy. Today we're going to talk, talk about something that I know has been keeping you awake at night. When you're uh, doing your backhand drive or uh, backhand loop, should your elbow be down or do you keep it out like this? All right. Now, which is correct? Um, one of the great things about doing what I do is that I get a chance to learn something. Um, and as I see students come in, I see far more students with their elbow pointing out when they do this. That's their natural tendency. And um, I have a tendency to keep mine low. Surely I must be right. Uh, and uh, they, they, they must be wrong. <laughs> um, not necessarily. In fact, um, the reason that I tend to keep my elbow down is that I approach most backhands in a position to block. And that's not necessarily what everybody does. And yeah, I'll go ahead and say my, my backhands are pretty steady. It's probably the steadiest part of my game and probably the, one of the best parts of my game that I can do backhands consistently. I can uh, a bit of a backhand dominant player. Not, not the greatest backhand in the world, but at least it's, uh, it's pretty steady and I can attack with it. Um, good drives, blocks, and loops as needed. But here's the answer to the question as best I can tell. And I had to do some research to get to this. Um, like I said, I know what I do. I know what I see a lot of the students do and I uh, don't really analyze every player that I play to see where they put their elbow. But the question should be, the elbow be down, or I'm showing you yeah, down like this or out like that. Here's where I did my research. Uh, first, I went to the uh, Tom Lodziak, um, his video on doing a backhand drive and watched him and um, didn't disagree with the thing he said. I teach it slightly different, a couple points that I would have made that he didn't and probably a couple points that he made that I don't, but we kind of come to the same conclusion and uh, I think either way you'd come up with a decent, decent backhand drive. He keeps his elbow slightly higher than mine. I suspect we're about the same height, um, but it's, it is slightly higher. So am I right? He's wrong? Is he right? Wrong. Here's what I, the conclusion I came to after watching a number of matches of top level players. Um, you gotta watch out when you start watching the world champions, uh, best players in the world play, because what's true for them sometimes isn't necessarily true for intermediate level club players or any club players anyway. Uh, but sometimes looking at the best will give you some insights and I think in this case it definitely did. There's a few points that I learned very quickly and we'll get to the elbow. First of all, watching the best players in the world, I was surprised at how often when they did use their backhand, it was a backhand block, elbow low, quick, because they, you know, uh, players are going to attack to their backhand. I, it looked like most of the matches I was watching, um, the players were trying to get to their forehand, attacking with their forehand. There was a lot of forehand to forehand counter drive or uh, counter looping. And um, quite often the backhand was a short, very quick thing. And in that case, elbow was down. It's like, okay. But there was a whole lot more shots where the elbow was up. Why would that be? So they do both. All right, obviously do any kind of flick over the table, your elbow is gonna be up. To do a real backhand loop, elbow is up. And, that, and it's more of a motion like that. I'm hoping you can see that. Okay, so the answer really somewhat is both. Now, if you're warming up and your elbow's out, what that probably tells me is that 
you, that's how you learn to do that, but you're, you're approaching your backhand in a way that you're going to try to do maybe, maybe more top spin, more aggressive shots. Whereas, for instance, I start in a position of blocking and then I add on um, any kind of type of weaker shot, I'll do more, but I start with a, in the position of blocking. I can get an aggressive shot that way, but I think sometimes, realistically, when I get a real weak shot, I end up, I will drop my racket, lift my elbow, and get a top spin attacking shot, which is not going to happen in the same way if my elbow is down. So I guess this sort of fits in with my uh, general conservative approach to table tennis where I uh, go for the safe shot quite often, or at least the one that I, which is gonna get there most consistently. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the safe shot, it doesn't mean it's the best shot. But, so, if you're thinking about it and you're wondering, do I need to have my elbow up or my elbow down? The answer is, depends. And I think it also depends, one, one other thing you can think about is um, how tall you are. And if somebody's really short, kids, if they're barely got their head above the table, um, they, they may have to have a slightly different approach than uh, an, an adult would. So all that kind of goes into it. And I'm not gonna worry too much more about whether somebody's got their elbow out Although I would think for, there's a couple things we, can, we definitely should take from this though. The extremes are always bad. If it's way up, it's pretty much always bad unless maybe, maybe there might be some, if, if your default position is way up, that's bad, okay? If it's way, way down, that's bad. Somewhere in the middle, depending on, on the shot, those are the ones that work and um, it, it could have a lot of things to do with li little different factors and how you approach the game. So I'm glad we got to the bottom of that mystery and um, you can take a look at your your backhand and examine uh, how you how you learned it, how you usually think about your backhand and go from there. All right, see you next time. Thanks.